talking in the hallway. And he continues to talk outside the door for several hours. Uh, Ron's, uh, Ron's butler leans into, I'm sorry, Bernard's butler leans into his ear and uh, cordially informs him that uh, the minister is actually the head of a fairly prominent noble house of dukes in the empire. I see. So Faustus is an idiot. What else is new? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I to forgot. To myself, Faustus you. cannot hear. <laughs> He's outside. outside. He can't still hear commenting. me. Shut up. He can't hear me. <laughs> no, Faustus is still <laughs> muttering to himself. As you we can hear him faintly in the background. Um, anyway. He then leads you into... Around other uh, realms, you found this is, like, pompousness goes into overdrive. To compensate. He leads you for a double reinforced door into a larger room, which uh, appears to be, you know, basically... A, a room basically dedicated to the staircase leading upward. There are stairs like that go here. This is meant to be stairs. I'm sorry, everyone. No, it's fine. Stairs. Got it. <clears throat> Close enough, right? Yeah, it looks like stairs. Kinda. You know? Mm hmm. It's fine. Even though the stair, the steps are five feet apart from each other. The, yeah, yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. The engineers weren't very intelligent. He says he leads you up the set of stairs, uh, which you know wind for a short period of time up to another door. This tower is fairly bland looking. There are a few very small windows, but it is mostly just plain stone. It obviously does not see a much use. Uh, it is much, much more quiet compared to all the other areas, even the servants' quarters like the kitchen. Uh, in fact, you can barely notice, thinking about it, you can barely hear anything from here, oddly enough. Only the very, very faint rumble of steps and very, very, very quiet murmurs in the distance. What a perfect place for a murder. But no, don't say that. <laughs> Did somebody say well, murder? To be fair, Faustus is always thinking about murder. Uh, I'm always scouting out perfect places to kill people. He then leads you into another short corridor. This <laughs> Bigford, one. what are you doing? This one at the end has a couple of guards. <laughs> Bigford, what are you doing? You're gonna kill us all. I need a... Where's that damn guard bog? We have so many bogs now, I can never find the ones I want. Here we go. You're These guys. You're spoiled for choice. Uh, Those guys uh, he, don't really uh, look that intimidating. No, they're not meant to be. He approaches the guards who appear to be uh, uh, basically the small guard force of the uh, of the Empress's cousin, who is apparently uh, apparently staying here. She could afford to uh, hold two guards. Wow. Oh, she she's not a hugely important member of the royal family. You You're know, telling me. Uh. Uh, the two guards do not appear to be very dutiful. They are just chatting away as you until you approach, where they quickly come to come to you know their senses and like stiffen up pretty dut and dutifully. The minister informs of the purpose there, and they quickly you know land to pass through the door into the em into the empress's cousin's chambers, uh, which I will now put here. So, Buford, what were you up to for the past year? Uh, you know, just hanging out. Just chilling. Hi, my... we were all hanging out in Faustus' cool new house. Were you frozen underground and then thawed in the springtime? Part of it, yeah. I mean, I am an ice wizard. I can do that kind of stuff. And a frog, I mean. But no, I went... Yes. I, I went back to my Bollywog village and continued trying to master arcane arts. Mm. So I turn invisible. Oh, oh. I went and saw my parents and gave them a bunch of the money that I'd earned. That's so beautiful of you, Renard. How is their circus doing? Oh, it's doing much better. Mine is right. They actually have a few people in it now. 
My paragon path is the rhyme tongue caller, which is going to give all of my summons an aura of cold damage. Sweet. And I also got a wall of ice and do ice damage on action point. Nice. My so, paragon path is unseen mage. You turn I have invisibility. Invisible. Yes, I can turn invisible and then like do stuff to sustain that invisibility and uh, turn other people invisible and uh, turn other people invisible some more. <laughs> that is, that is my new gimmick. It's all invisibility all the time. I I can do stuff with invisibility. It's pretty nice. Everybody is invisible forever. I need a looking for a noble woman pog. So now you just need to turn Faust all of Faustus's zombies invisible, and we'll be the most overpowered group. <laughs> That's really messed up. <laughs> oh god, that will just destroy the game. You need what about that blonde lady that I put down before? Which one? Oh, she's no, she's too old. This one needs. She needs to be youngish. Oh, that. Oh, that'll do. These unrealistic expectations you put on the pogs. NPCs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the pogs need to look exactly how I imagined them in my mind. If you could make them underaged. <laughs> <sighs> Excuse <laughs> me. He's just the guy from. Uh, what was that again? Dungeon something 2? Dungeon Defenders 2? Who specifically requested that the RT make the robot characters look underaged. Uh, what are we... What the fuck are you talking about? I have lost that. Is the thing that, was, that is a thing that, that was revealed by former employees of that company. In no, the, I just, like, the I'm just week. not even sure what we're talking about anymore. Don't worry don't about know. it. Because now we're opening okay. the door. Okay. <sighs> Faustus weekly brushes past the guards. He jumps into it. Uh, as you see, uh, as you pass through, you said uh, through rudely through the door. You see uh, the apparent the Empress's cousin, who's I've just given a name now, uh, sitting at her desk and apparently busily writing something. Uh, doesn't seem to be very conscious of the outside world. I'll describe the room a bit in detail. Uh, you have like um, her bed over here in the corner. Uh, a set a. A pleasant sort of private dinner table here of a couple of seats and a white cloth on the top of it. A um, a closet in the corner here and a smaller cabinet to the side of it and a waste bin in the corner. And for here, presumably some kind of private bath chamber. Faustus walks up behind her and looks over her shoulder at what she's writing. Um, she looks at, she stares at him with incredulous, uh, incredulously as he approaches, uh, pushing what she's writing to the side. Yes. Excuse me, sir? Do you need something? Yes, with the Excuse me, lumbering man. skeleton man. <laughs> Excuse me, eight foot tall skeleton man. She says without any shock, surprisingly. Well, people here in the Empire see a lot of, you know, undead people. I say, you know, yes, we're here the... to guard the minister. Oh, is he here? Uh, she says, the minister then at this point emerges through the door and he sa and uh, says, Ah, yes, uh, par pardon, my dear, these are just my... A few of my private uh, personal bodyguards that I hired for this event. Can't be too careful with the assassination last year, and all that. Private bodyguards... <sighs> they say that you can never trust the guards, uh, the guards of the palace anymore. Not truly, not truly, and I'm inclined to believe them. She shakes her head and says, Uncle, your paranoia will do- will, will leave- What does she say? Fuck. What does To the script! Your paranoia shall be your downfall. That sounds about right. Your paranoia will be your downfall, sure. Oh, I can't let Drac be the DM. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't... Just a backseat DMing. <laughs> whenever I try and, like, whenever I try and state dial about having a, 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 just a piece of paper to read from, I end up botching it. That's okay. <laughs> uh, just write the whole campaign on your arm and check it. I have, like, a massive text file that I'm reading for all of this, uh... Maybe you should make separate text files for different characters. She says, she goes back to writing what she's doing and says, Go on ahead about me, please. I'll be along shortly. Can I sneak and look over, like, look what she's writing? Uh, what does it yes. matter? I make an attempt to take a quick, uh, quick look at, uh... 24? <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> peering, you are trying peering over her shoulder about me trying to appear conspicuous. You managed to glide to Gillian that is some sort of uh... Oh, I can be conspicuous. I don't care. Well, you don't, you don't care if she sees you. <laughs> if she sees you, she'll immediately like put it away because I... it's a private letter. All right, then I'll be conspicuous then. Or inconspicuous. She appears to be writing to a friend in a foreign land asking about their welfare. Like, it, you know, it has to, it's, it's a, it's like, it talks about, you know, a desert and like, you know, how things are, you know, how, how, they, how they miss them and how like, you know, they hope, she hopes that they'll be well soon and all that stuff. And that she hopes that they, she see them again. All that kind of crap. <laughs> it's hard to really pick out the exact details about like reading the entire thing though, which would require literally just shoving her aside. <laughs> No, I'm, hmm. I won't do that. Uh, hey, the minister says, come along, friends. The ceremony should be starting soon, and the balcony is up ahead. Right behind you, buddy. Wow. <laughs> he really strained to get those words. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, the girl, uh, the woman, the woman, uh, the woman mutters as she leaves, uh, goodbye, uncle, as he sets off. And he mutters, uh, goodbye, my dear, and everything. Oh, were they, was she not supposed to give that away? Oh. Well, it's, you could ask him, I guess. I said, why are you two muttering to each other? Uh. Wait, not muttering? She didn't mutter to him. Oh, but okay. He only muttered to her. Why did you mutter to her just then? Some animosity says, oh. between you? No, no, I just I hadn't. Uh, it's difficult to explain, but our family relations are perhaps a little bit complex per se. She, it's our time. What was that? Concerning that she told me that. Mm. I see. Uh, he leads you through the number short corridor and finally to a for this final room. Oh, family is complicated. I'm glad I don't have any. I'm sure Ross originally had a family. You're a monster. <laughs> Literally, he is. Yes. You're everything wrong with society. He is an eight foot tall cow skeleton. I'm Oops. a frog. <laughs> I'm a human. Why are we doing this? I'm a toad. I'm a toad. I'm just as weird as you. And he Not me. You... I'm normal. He leads you out onto the balcony, where there are a number of like prepare of seats prepared for everyone yep. there. Oh. Uh, there's already a person here though, which is a you know a, y a young looking man. Hmm. Uh, who is sitting next to him? Who is? Uh, it? I was going to put it. Oh. Oh, Louise this Pog. It appears Ew. it's a fairly, a fairly, oh, he's ugly. A fairly unpleasant, weaselly-looking boy, but appear he <laughs> has a passing resemblance to the minister, so he's probably like his son or something. What a tool! What a tool! I say as I walk up to him <laughs> and kick dirt in his face. <laughs> what Hit a my butt! Like there's nothing to stop what me. What a tool! Uh, Sakura, so, you need to catch up with the group. You're, you're I'm staying here. You can't stay here, there. <laughs> you have to go. Uh, you're supposed to be his bodyguard, you can't just stay outside. Well, I thought we were also <laughs> supposed to protect her. No, you're just his bodyguard. No, we don't give a fuck about her. <laughs> She's not paying us. She asks you for some privacy while she continues writing the <laughs> Yeah. Mm. <sighs> I sit in the shadows. Oh. The Socorro has become an assassin. Please, please, the minister says. Everyone feel free to take a seat. Everyone feel to take a shot at my stupid idiot son. <laughs> what? My awful, terrible His son. son looks at him off the I, uh, I asked the minister, so what title does your son hear? Oh. Oh, my son? Oh, he doesn't hold me titles. Perhaps he'll, perhaps he'll inherit. If my other seven sons die first. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you poor thing. I nudge my butler and command them to laugh sarcastically. I pat, I pat him on his, I pat him on his head and yeah. I say, "Well, better luck next life." And I go back <laughs> to my seat. 
Oh, harsh. Uh, your but uh, your butler laughs condescendingly in a slightly mechanical fashion. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like an elf, basically. Yes. Oh. Uh, Bernard will watch the whatever while sitting on the sun's head. Okay. Is Bernard? Is there, is there, is there, Bernard, are you gonna sit down? <laughs> no, I'm gonna stand behind the sun. Oh. Uh, do you want to take a look out below you? Because you're on a balcony now, and you can now see the, the grand ballroom before you in extreme, uh... I jump over towards the balcony. I jump over the sun. You perch on the edge. Yes. I thought you were gonna say perching, you over, perching over the edge, you can see an incredibly grand ballroom of greater scale than you could ever imagine, with huge marble floor, floor, floors painted ornately, uh, with, uh, with, you know... Images of great battles and victories past a huge, a uh, huge stage with a, a, a throne of gold at the very back, and um, a number of lesser seats all amassed around it, and a podium at the very front for someone to stand, all, uh, all underneath a grand glass cr r crystalline roof from which the night sky beams down upon you. The stars are uh, clearly visible and pleasant. Hmm. Well, this will do, I suppose. There are hundreds or perhaps thousands of people down there. It's hard to tell. There's a lot. Hmm. And they're all here for that Empress's post-coronation ceremony? Well, she was coronated a few weeks prior, but she is, uh, she's here to make a public address, you know, about her, what her intentions are to do in her, you know, time of ruling. What do we know about the kingdom? This is the Empire. You, you're... You remember the Empire, right? Yeah, what do we know about the Empire? Um, the Empire is the largest nation in the world. It is a thriving trade, uh, it is based on, originally based on, uh, you know, essentially a trade pact between a few city-states. It has now grown to essentially dominate the majority of the western side of the continent. Uh, pretty much ruling over all of the, all of the humans, the Dark Elves, uh, having a lot of influence in the uh, in all of the elven kingdoms um ruling over the gnomes uh harflings uh harflings harflings oh harflings harflings oh i see uh, for, for about 50 years there's been a tenuous peace between the uh the dwarven republic and the empire as they unite together to fight the forces of the blinded ones in the far north and hopefully rid them from the world forever they have achieved considerable victories uh, recently, there was some domestic trouble as the Empire annexed a small uh, nation to the uh, to the east, but that's all in the past now. Huh. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about with that. And the Empress is the highest role? The Empress, uh -huh. uh, although she does not have absolute power, she has the most power in the Empire, and it's, although it is still essentially, you know... The foundation of the Empire is that it is ruled by a... Um, Council. A group of, yeah, a council of the, of the leaders of city-states, and the uh, empress is merely the leader of the most powerful and traditionally the dominant one. Uh, she does not have absolute control over it, but she is the most the loudest voice. All right. Huh. So this is a pretty big deal then. This is a pretty big deal. It will determine, you know, the rough direction of the empire's pol uh, like intentions in the future. All right, so, so naturally, people from everywhere in the world are here. She's gonna come out and say hope and change, and everyone will applaud. And... Yes, basically. Yeah. Okay, got it. I'm sure the thousands have seen it all before. Like a hundred times. Uh, there are like there are various small um, uh, items of food and drink available on the balcony on the small table in front of you. No, I already stole something from the kitchen. Uh, <laughs> so you're eating that giant duck. You just have I'm eating whole... part of it. The minister's the son book. hopelessly tries to see past you and off the balcony, but he cannot. Your hair is... But I spread my hair out like a cape. And double in size. Uh, what? <laughs> you can't... <laughs> yeah, I... Yes, I can. I have a lot of hair. You took your hair out of its ponytail specifically he to fr blow it he, in his face. He looks downward in misery. Actually, it's usually in a braid. Uh, but anyway, about ten minutes or so passed with the minister making idle conversational attempts at you, trying to talk about, you know, your past and trying to tell and telling you about how he heard about your great victory in the Dwarven Kingdoms against uh, the tyrant in the south. Well, it wasn't that impressive. I mean, they were dwarves, after all. 
Uh, and eventually, however, the light in the, in the great chamber dim, and uh, a an incredibly a young looking but incredibly ornately dressed woman walks up onto the stage wearing a simple but obviously ridiculously expensive silver crown. Uh, Faustus, even from here, you are you can sense that she has probably enchanted with a million and one different things. <laughs> All right, yeah. Uh, a million and one. Uh, I'm going. I've actually written the speech in full, but I don't think you guys probably want to stay. No, let's hear it. No. Yes. You wrote it. We must hear it. Bring her out. Hear the uh, speech. Um, I don't want to read the speech right speech. now. Yeah, speech. Speech. Can I just post it in the chat later? No. Like, Fine. No, listen, I, our viewers aren't going to be reading our chat later. I'm going to give a summary of the speech. I just don't want to read yeah, it. Yeah, sure do that. Okay, fine. Give the summary. The speech begins with, you know, basically accolades of, wo of welcoming and uh, gestures of friendship towards the dwarves and the empire's other allies, uh, with a bit of passive aggressiveness for the dwarves, and of course, um, generally, generally talking about preserving the status quo and fighting the blinded ones, but saying that because of their victories, she intends to turn uh, the Empire's gaze inward for now and focus on developing its, eco its economy and its infrastructure and uh, strengthening itself and, le and its quality of life for all of its people and trying to, uh, uh, trying to bring uh, peacefully uh, the remainder of the Eastern Kingdoms under its protection. People uh, applause as a perfect points. Um, she also talks about giving uh, giving more power to the people, uh, which it doesn't really specify how that's going to happen. Rock the vote. <laughs> vote or die, uh, motherfucker. About, you know, trying to... Uh, and about increasing the Empire's trade of the distant southern continent. Foreign uh, policy. The speech is pretty boring. The minister seems completely enthralled, and as you know, a minister of internal affairs, he probably has a good reason to be, because you know, basically his job is spending money internally. People must fall asleep on top of you. <sighs> Aww. Aww. And starts. Glad he's not taking it personally since I blew him up earlier. 